This river was degraded for over a hundred years. We wanted the design to sort of mimic what would have been here naturally before it was straightened. So rather than being just a, a drainage canal, it's now a, a river with fully functioning river processes. The Belty Burn as was, it had been heavily managed for agriculture about 200 years ago. It had been uh, completely straightened and over deepened. Because they've been straightened, the flows are quite swift because they're not able to get out onto the floodplain. So they dig themselves down deeper and deeper and deeper into the landscape. The old channel couldn't have been much worse for fish. It was one kilometre long, it was dead straight, it had the same depth, it had the same flow, and it had very poor bed habitat. Looking at historical maps, we could see exactly what this area used to look like. It had a, a really twisting um, stream that flowed backwards and forwards right across the whole width of the floodplain through what must have been a really rich wetland area. And the design is really is best fit to that natural um, system as we could get within the, the constraints of the site. Although the land here has been drained over hundreds of years, that drainage was never able to really lower the water table sufficiently to allow this ground to be um, intensively farmed. Before you can get to the point of funding the construction work, there's a lot of work to be done and that all has to be paid for. You can't get to that point until you've had an initial option study. You have to fund the design, you have to fund a flood risk assessment, various um, assessments of the ecology on the site, various um, wildlife surveys must be done to, to get us to the stage where we were ready to apply for planning permission and apply for a license to enable us to be ready to apply for the big funding to do the construction itself. I work on the principle the best thing for salmon is to turn the river back to its natural state. In the, a river like the Dee's natural state, it would have been so abundant for salmon and the natural processes of the river are what salmon need. The design that we ended up with is, is a bit of a compromise. It's trying to get as close as possible to beginning the process of the river recovering. So the upper part of the site, we do have extensive wetland features as part of the design, but downstream because of just site constraints, the river turns into a bit more of a, a, a more traditional re, re meander design. So once you've got a design in place, you're then at the stage of translating that to um, a dig on the ground. The main dig on the channel started at the bottom end and we worked our way up. So there was a real concentration of diggers and bulldozers down at the bottom end of the site. And it was quite dramatic as we worked our way upstream digging out that river channel. But all of the time that that was happening, there was always at least one machine up here just nibbling away at the wetlands. And I was really amazed at the scale of the works that happened up in the wetlands because at the time it seemed like all of the action was happening at the downstream end. The wetlands are incredibly rich. They're like a ladder for, for fish. They're 150 times more productive in a wetland state than in a, in a canalised ditch. Now surely all that extra food production, all that extra energy, has got to be good for the, the fish living downstream and living in the wetlands. It was fantastic to see the wetlands fill up and the watercourse flow through it for the first time for 250 years. We used the dug material to fill in the old channel. We used some of it to form the six islands that are here and that's been a really fantastic kind of extra area of habitat, provides um, a refuge for all sorts of wildlife but in particular birds. The Dee is a really spatey river now, it goes up fast and it comes down fast and the reason for that is we've drained most of the wetlands, we've drained a lot of the land. If we can reinstate where appropriate these wetlands, they act like a sponge. So they soak up the water when we've got high flows um, and they also hold that water. In, and in the summer, when we've got low flows and drought conditions, that water soaks out of the wetlands and keeps the rivers charged. We make the 
the, the changes, we construct this, but it's really nature that does the, the fine tuning. Since the works we've had several large storms and this whole area now fills up with water. These wetland systems are very good at controlling pollution issues, fine sediments that are uh, introduced to the river system upstream through agricultural practices will tend to get stored in these areas. We've lost over 80% of uh, wetland habitats in the UK and the Belty is a perfect example of how we can maybe get those habitats back again and all the wildlife and biodiversity that these habitats support. The ground started to get green very quickly and that made all the difference to the site to, to start to see it getting kind of clothed in in the new vegetation that was coming. But at the same time, we were starting to get an awful lot of wildlife coming to the site, and that was fantastic, because it's what we'd all been waiting for. I think in 10 years' time, it'll almost be unrecognisable, uh, and the changes that will result both physically and in terms of the vegetation succession will, will totally transform this site. And I think it will be a, an excellent example of what can be done in these types of environment with relatively little cost and relatively little impact to other land uses in the area. We're going to be monitoring fish populations every year, um, wading birds will be monitored, uh, vegetation development will be monitored as well, and all of that will give us a collective picture. I think if we can show the success of this project, it opens up the door for lots of other places on Deeside and throughout Scotland. We're determined that this is not just going to be a, a demonstration project and sit back and think, oh, this is lovely, look what we've done. It, it is a, an example of what we need to do more of. The last day of the works, when the diggers were, were leaving the site and Edwin just turned round and yelled, fish! And there was a, a cock salmon guarding a red. You can't get a better endorsement than fish deciding that they want to spawn in your newly restored watercourse.